Welcome back to our channel. This is Kimiatich Franklin, presenting on behalf of Kenya Pharma Mentor. And today we are going to see the role of each and every member in the society while fighting the chronic diseases. We all know several names of chronic diseases that are within our society at the moment. And today I ask each and every one of you to stay and be tuned until we finish this. In case you are watching, make sure you watch until the end so that you can learn your key fatal role in fighting these chronic diseases and eradicating what is affecting the society for ages till now. So book written by 15 cancer survivors, which was celebrated recently in Sharjah. So we are going to have a brief summary on how you are going to assist in eradication of these chronic diseases and bring life to the society. So welcome and may you watch it to the end. Copies of this book, it is from the depth of his heart that he did so. At the age of 14, Omar is a cancer survivor, a unique one who decided to tell his story and have it showcased in the world's largest book extravaganza. Born in Egypt and having moved to the United Arab Emirates at the age of seven, Omar expected to have a childhood just like any other, enjoying the beauty and capitalizing on the opportunities that Dubai had to offer to marvel at the iconic infrastructure, to smoothly school in one of the world's best destinations as he pursued his dreams. But the universe offered him all that, but with a bit of a challenge. When I came uh, to UAE, uh, I felt sick and then my parents uh, let me go to the... Dark hormone. Uh, it's not easy thing. It, it, it takes a while, but after you finished it, you, you will feel like you did an achievement in your life. And uh, it's, uh, you, have to, you have to force on it, and uh, at the end you have to defeat it. And for cancer survivors such as Omar, every little effort counts. And in their little effort, they have written their stories. Now it is said that if there is a good story which you haven't read on any book yet, then you better tell that story by writing it on a book. And as you've seen from the premiere that occurred in the Sharjah, about the book written by the 15 cancer survivors, Kenya Pharma Mentor is here to highlight the fact that chronic diseases affect us in one way or the other. So the question comes, what is my role in fighting these chronic diseases? Chronic diseases affect each and every member of the society at any time without any plan, and you just find yourself or anybody else being a victim of circumstances without any plan, without any cause. Sometimes could be some triggers which cause these chronic diseases, but it does not choose sometimes, it just comes down. So it is a summary of the few and the experience of these uh, 15 cancer survivors who wrote their book, Nothing Can Break You. And we realize we shall be much established to face the challenges that comes along with the diseases. Why is it important for me to know about my role in fighting against cancer, for example? This may apply to any other disease, but what, what, on this presentation, I shall focus on against cancer. Why is it important? You might not be the patient, but you could be a relative or a friend or patient. These chronic diseases occur to anyone at any time. And it is very necessary for us to put a defensive mechanism, which is valuable and necessary for us to know what to do at one point and to make sure that life is continued, empowered, and there is a progress towards recovery. These concepts are beneficial and are worth knowing because it facilitates the utilization of the magic super drug, which is the patient himself or herself. The patient has ability to facilitate the other medication very easily. Patients' own acceptance and action and choices after the period of diagnosis, treatment, and biological extent that through the process of recovery are very vital in the process of medication. This facilitates fast and efficient medication process and ensures maximum prevention of cancer and other diseases prior to occurring. So it is important for us to know the concept 
and to know the role at which each and every member can play in the society. So with this video, we will understand how can we prevent and how can we facilitate faster recovery. These concepts are said are not only going to assist the patients, but also equips the relative, equips the friend, and this will increase the fighting spirit within our beloved one and who find themselves as victim. Avoid the, it will assist us to avoid mockery and prejudgment and the fear of unknowns for the families. Furthermore, it will assist to eradicate the misconceptions that exist at the moment and also stop the pity and endorse empathy. Sometimes the patient could observe pity on our face and it could be difficult for them to see hope. We need to endorse empathy that when you go to an hospital to see a patient, the patient sees hope. Hope is vital. And from this video, we will understand more, especially from the concepts outlined by the survivors. We are going to display facts that aren't in our condition and as a government, as a society. I, we all need to know, we know the fact that we remain and the conditions that we face are seasonal. There is power beneath our attitudes towards every encounter in life. How we encounter and approach different situations and circumstances that befell us matters a lot. It does not mean that how great the trouble may be can sway and sweep us away, but too strong, we can come and overcome the challenges. No matter what the disease may be, no matter what may be the challenge, it is, it is possible to be beaten. We've seen Corona. Many people have beaten Corona. Recoveries have been increasing day in, day out. So because of the belief and because of the hope, that there is people recovering, there was this ability, people recovering. Now, I would like to just go through and give a brief idea of what cancer is. And by definition, cancer is a disease in which some of the body cells grow uncontrollably and spread to other parts. And uh, this is, uh, we say that this cancer is caused by certain changes just in the genes because these cells, these human cells are composed of genes and these genes uh, make up the DNA. So these cancer cells, when they grow, they replicate by cell, cell division, just as the other cells of the body. So these changes will spread and they are divided into two. That is the benign cancer and there is the malignant cancer. Benign cancer is less, does not spread and is less harmful, but the malignant spread easily and causes harm to the, to the patient. And this needs to be removed as soon as possible. So benign tumors are a little bit, they don't give much impact and they are, they, they, you can do even without medication, but malignant has to do with you getting medication as soon as possible. So in short, I'm going to just highlight the cancer treatment procedure. And we know that the cancer treatments involve surgery, radiation, and other medications that the patient undergo. This could be uh, understood so well with the patients and the medics. So many cancer treatment exist and actually it depends with the situation of the patient, the stage of the cancer. And at times there could be combination of the, of the treatments at once. So these treatments may include uh, a procedure which is known as false climb therapy, which this involves the procedural, it is a procedural or sequential form of treatment, which falls right away from surgery, then followed by chemotherapy, then radiation. And uh, you can do one at a time, or even one could be enough, depending on the magnitude of the disease. So 
you realize that this is just a sequential and a systematic way of doing so these chronic diseases have a certain sequence of treatment and normally the medics or the patient has to know that yes this treatment process is not just a simple you visit an hospital and you get injected and you are done it's some procedural thing that you have to attend clinics you have to even before the one treatment is over or before that process before the surgery it has to undergo some stages so primary treatment actually it has a call in which the cancer is removed from your body this is the step number one then the step number two there is a different treatment which the main objective is to kill the cancer cell so with this concept you will realize that you have stage number three being palliative treatment which this one has to do more about the the follower of activities after the surgery the radiation and chemotherapies and that process of recovery from the surgery and maybe what has been done and this is important for each and every patient every relative and everyone in the society to know because it is important to master that this sequence is important and it is important for you to ask from the medics so as to know that after diagnosis after this chronic illness what what are the steps that follow So it's important for each and every member in the society to know the steps of treatment. I may not elaborate all the steps of treatment here, but with the guidance of your doctor, you are going to get the exact ways and steps depending on the patient and the magnitude and the stage at which the patient is. So important, the most important thing is to highlight the fact that you should get to the bottom of everything and know the right procedure. So number three, we have the cancer treatment options, and there are many options and said, and these options include the surgery, and this includes the removal of the cancer. The chemotherapy involves the killing of the cancer cells by drugs, radiation. Uh, therapy involves the use of X-rays, protons to kill the cancer cell. Number four, we have the bone marrow transfer by the advice of the doctors you can have a bone marrow transplant so these are just among the things you are going to expect and number five we have the immunotherapy which involves the use of biological therapy and this uses the immune system to fight the cancer so the medics are going to analyze your condition and they they will advise accordingly and then number six we have the hormone therapy these are just some some types of cancers are fueled by your body hormone and the best thing to do is you just stop the, this hormone from being produced or you just block their active or their reception by blocking the hormone receptor cells. Number six, we have the drug therapy. This targeted, this targeted drug therapy are meant for specific abnormalities within the cancer cells that, occur and that allow them to survive. So when you provide this drug to specific area, or to specific abnormality within the cancer cell, it is being dealt with accordingly and eradicated at the end. So number seven, you have the cry, cry, uh, cryoablation, which this is the treatment that kills the cancer cells using cold. So you provide a cold environment and the cancer cells are going to die. So a cancer is pumped into the cryoprop in order to freeze the tissue. Then this tissue is allowed to die. The, the freezing and die process repeated severally during the same treatment session in order to kill the cancer cell. So that is the procedure of cryoablation. Number eight is the radio, radio frequency ablation. This treatment uses electric energy to eat the cancer cells, causing them to die. So during the radio frequency ablation, a doctor writes a thin needle through the skin or through the incision into the cancer cell tissue. High frequency energy passes through the needle and causes the surrounding tissue to heat up, thereby killing the nearby cells and thereby relieving the patient from the cancer cells. Now, those are just a brief sequence on, our, on what normally cancer patients go through. And I'll say this 
choices are going to be made depending on the patient's conditions and the patient underlying conditions as well and the stage at which the cancer has reached. Now, that was not much of my focus today, but the focus is to bring to you what is the role and what and how can we fight these chronic diseases, not only leaving the work to the doctors and to the patient who is suffering at that moment. So, other than this, we know that uh, there is that thing we can do to assist something. Each and every time, we don't need to do something big, but by information, by giving hope, and ensuring that the patient is well, everything then moves to the right track. And just from what we learned from COVID-19, it's just some basic concepts that were needed in the society, and this pandemic would be fit, would be wiped away. So far, so good on some countries, but some countries are still battling. So, but the right thing is that, and the good part is, there is the procedure which exists, there is a mechanism which exists. Similarly to these other cancer diseases and chronic diseases that are there in our society today, it means that there are things which when we do right, there are things when we follow to the ladder, it makes it easier for the patients to recover and to overcome these diseases. So, so far, we've witnessed cancer survivors living a normal life after their illness. So meaning there is something which they did and there is something which needs to be taught and needs to be in our minds each and every time. So that when we meet or when we come across these cancer patients, we are able to share a word or encourage them or tell them the exact thing that will give them hope and will give them the right procedure of overcoming these chronic diseases. The first thing we need to do is to make sure that we are aware once you are aware, you are, you are able to deal with your condition as a patient. And number two, you are able to deal with this patient who is sick in your family. And you are able to deal with this patient who is sick at your neighborhood. And at the same time, you will assist the medics in fighting the chronic diseases in our society. So with me today are the 12 steps in which each and every member in the society should know, be he the patient, be he the relative, or be the neighbor. The first one. We need to get the facts about the cancer. Be it you are the patient yourself or the family or the friend, we need to know after diagnosis, we need to get the exact facts about the, the, the type of cancer at hand. So that is necessary for the patient's wellness. So you try to obtain the basic information about your cancer immediately after the diagnosis in order to make decisions about your care or about the care of that you have. So there are some guidelines in which you can ask, you can try to use them to assist you identify your cancer. So the first thing you want identify what kind of a cancer is it? You identify where is the cancer in, in, the, in the body and how far has it spread or not. Can the cancer be treated or not? And of course, all cancer can be treated and handled or controlled if the treatment is not present or not fine at that moment because of the underlying conditions. So what is the chance that my cancer can be cured? You need to get the exact facts so as to clear your minds and make sure that you are in a stable mental conditions, even if you are sick or you are relatively sick. What is important is the peace of mind and to know exactly what is being expected of you. So the other side, we need to do some tests and procedures which are required so as to know what is exactly ailing your body. So, and what are the treatment options? These are just questions in which can assist you know more about your answer. Number, the next one is how will the treatment be benefit me? Can I expect, what do I expect during the treatment? And what are the side effects? What should I, what should, when should I call the doctor? What can I do to prevent my cancer from occurring in case you recover? How likely are my children or other family members going to get? So it is important for you to know 
and ask the medics for exact explanation on this so as to make sure that your mind is okay and stable because when you consider bringing a family a family member to such interviews or to such appointments you realize that the family member or the friend will assist you in remembering some of the key concepts and explanation given by the doctor so it is important to keep a very good know-how of your condition it is important to know the exact things then immediately after diagnosis it is important to keep the lines of communication open don't personalize the disease and don't personalize your status make sure that at least you sustain an open conversation with your doctor immediate friends and the family because once you personalize a problem it becomes something that can depress you emotionally and you cannot beat and overcome anything number three we need to anticipate the possible physical changes and start changing our lifetime calls to suit the changes that may occur to us physically you know after having these chronic diseases everything will not be okay the same way we would expect life to go and the goals we had so it's important for us to adjust our mindset to adapt and anticipate that yes this is a challenge for example if uh, the sum of the part which is going to be removed maybe is your leg it means that even if you love football and you will look forward to being a footballer it means that that goal is no longer going to be fine so you have to readjust and see yeah this one cannot work where else can i achieve and work and feel happy when i attain so you realize that you are going to live a life that will be meaningful and with the advice of the doctors and those who are going to support you you realize that you you are going to achieve something which is very important to you now number four we need to maintain a healthy lifestyle where possible you choose your diet appropriately and also as per the guidance of the doctor there are some of the foods which are incompatible with the drugs and can cause food drug interaction so you need to choose this food very well and at the same time maintain a healthy diet so as to make sure that your body is replenished so as a family member or a relative you need to make sure that you assist in supplementing this quality diet as a friend also you make sure that your friend who is saying is supplied with sufficient diet and you make sure that you show up once in a while and make them do the exercise they you can you can easily know what the person love and you can assist them in case they like going out to the field and because of the ailment they cannot go out participate in the compound and enable them to do the exercise numbers number four we need also it's just an continuation so we need to let friends and family help us as as the cancer patient or anybody with chronic disease as i've explained be free and be willing to be assisted by the family members be open as as you keep this uh, you give them an opportunity to supply to you what is important when they come uh, asking how you feel don't feel offended be free to explain to them don't let your facial expression and emotions and your details scare them away bring them closer to you and to make sure that they feel free coming and also friends and family should make an effort of loving and showing hope to this patient whenever you see even if the patient is too is maybe uh, of account with the illness you need to show some sense of hope and indeed hope and god will provide a solution and a way forward number five you as i highlighted um, we need to review your goals and priorities both as a patient and as a relative or a caregiver so reviewing the goals or as a patient means that there were those things which you wanted to achieve you wanted to attain or you gave priority while you are well 
but now because of the chronic illness you realize that it will be hard for you to to meet them and life may seem not meaningful to you anymore and your world may decrease so you need to review those goals it is important now as the caregiver or as the, as the child mother son or wife or husband of somebody who is sailing you need to readjust your priorities and time make sure you give time and in and as much as possible you are in contact communication and a good relationship with the patient and also the patient should reciprocate the same with this facilitate faster recovery and make, make sure that every other side and scope of life is running too properly so number six is we need to try and maintain normal lifestyle at where possible we do not need to do any modification you know these modifications of lifestyles comes with thinking and once we modify our thinking and try to cope a lifestyle that maybe it's not compatible or maybe because you are sick you feel that now because you are sick you need to continue sleeping all the day and maybe if you could work and work around it would be meaningful and you, you have been used to that normally so in case you are able, you know, in a position to work around the compound or you used to work in the garden or you used to do some work online or you you had some some of your procedures so you keep as much as possible that lifestyle running don't be so quick to modify everything and to cope uh, or do away with all the tasks you are doing or your lifestyle don't adapt but do lifestyle as much as possible make sure that you are sticking to the normal lifestyle you had but also there are those which are very necessary because once for example your limb is eliminated you are hindered from frequent moving but you can modify some of the styles of working maybe by the wheelchair you can use the crutches and it's important to sustain some you don't modify everything in your life number seven consider how you your diagnosis will impact your finance this is the first and the crucial point which when you neglect it will cause to mental stress hit you are able to pay your bills or not it is important to consider that yes i'm not in a position to pay these bills but god will provide a way in which these bills are going to pay then you try to draw a workable plan towards solving this issue. Yeah, Bihid, you are the key, you are the key breadwinner. You need to realign and adjust yourself and think and try to come up and formulate a way in which these expenses that you are going to incur day in, day out are going to be met. And as you from the first explanations, we see that when you be, when you keep your channels of communication very easily. The society will be able to see on how to assist you the agencies and maybe from where you are employed first will see the need of coming in and they will see uh, friends will also see a way forward of assisting you so it is important to keep your channels of communications open you need to be very free and open and keep trying always these challenges are meant to be overcome Number eight, we need to talk with your healthcare team about the options available. Make sure that you consult widely about your disease and conclusively because there's nobody else who will ask them on your behalf. So there are the leading questions in which maybe they can assist you. Like, for example, will I have time away from work or will my friends and family need to take time away from work so as to attend me as a patient you need also to know is your insurance going to pay for the treatment and insurance cost how many how much does the medication process cost and everything that every scope that revolve around your treatment and your health is supposed to be in your know-how because knowing that will make you stable and progressive towards recovering and towards a normal health lifestyle. Number nine, you need to talk to people with cancer or with the same problem you have. 
because these chronic diseases are almost similar, but people ask different questions and there are some stages at which when you reach, somebody else will tell you, I did this or I did the other one. And with the help of the doctor, you realize that your situation is going to be solved easily and also you are going to be well. So it's important for each and every person in the society to feel free and ask from those who maybe have recovered even from cancer. And that's why it's important for us to reflect on these points assimilated from the 15 cancer survivors who wrote their books, among others who have come out and speak about their survival. Number 10, we need to fight the stigmas. There is a lot of stigma that comes along with these chronic illness and diseases. So this stigma needs to be handled at the level of the patient, the level of the relative, and the level of a friend who understands what a chronic disease is. And every member in the society should work towards fighting this stigma and should work towards giving a conducive optimum environment for the recovery of the patient. So this stigma are, comes to us who are associated mainly because of the fears that come along and maybe loss of job and the normal lifestyle is lost. So we need to determine how well can we deal with these stigmas and people fire is from one hand to the other. So there are several mechanisms with which you can fight the stigma at the personal level and at the society level. But the key pro, pro, propeller is that whatever the people will say, does not affect you not unless you decided to take and as long as your thoughts are correct and sound and stable no other wind shall sway you so make sure you say no to stigma and do not give in to stigma sustain the communication open and everything will be okay number 11 we need to develop our own coping strategy my coping strategy to a challenge is not your coping strategy so you need to practice on relaxation techniques and way of life that are beneficial to you and so seems good to you for me i could go out for a run or a walk in the forest or in the in the nature walks or in the places of interest and i feel okay but somebody else will see that listening to a music will be beneficial to me or uh, talking with a friend is enough so you need your own strategy so you need to keep a channel to help you organize your thoughts and when you are faced with a difficult decision list them the pros and the cons from each and the, each choice so you find a source of spiritual support also is very important and we shall assist you in coping with every other thing some things as human at human level we, it is hard to handle but when god is involved in between you realize that it will, the light and the burden will be simpler and you, real, you are going to get realign and focus towards your recovery. So you need to set time to be alone and meditate upon the fire you are with medication and you need to respire yourself. You need to talk to yourself and remain focused towards the medication process. So these are the key things that are assimilated and brought to you by Kenya Pharma Mentor as a combination of few thoughts derived from their cancer survivors and other patients. So from this, you realize that having all these steps that I mentioned, the step number 12 is important because Having known all those things, having known all those, they are, they are simple. We could know most of them. But learning everything is useless if it is not going to be applied. So make sure you apply and you capitalize on maintaining a safe, quick, and a faster recovery for the chronic patients. I mean, these chronic diseases should be eliminated from the face of the earth. And the only mechanism to be eliminated is by talking about them and 
sharing ideas and ways in which these diseases are going to be eliminated. The problems on this world are so much occurring to us, not because of anything else, but because of the silence. We don't share experience, and most instances, everybody work on his or her home. But it is important for us to share, to write articles. As a cancer patient, you need to give your own story. You need to write a book. You need to keep a channel that will assist you, will assist somebody else, and also assist you so as to prevent further spread of these diseases and more, more, and we, we are in a position to handle and save more lives. So with that, I urge each and everyone in the society to take and play his role. From what you've learned today, it's important for you to share, it's important for you to practice and to make sure that this video reaches to more members in the society and decisions are going to be made. Because when we leave this work to medics only, we realize that the solution is achieved at a slower rate and the rest of the people remain unsensitized about what is fatal and what could be beneficial to them. So the doctors could not do everything, but as a patient, you need to know this. As a relative, as a friend, you need to be in a position to assist that friend of yours. Because you don't know the helmet comes from which side and these are the things that you don't plan for. So we need to be there to uplift one another and to make sure that every situation that is tough, we are there to overcome. Thank you and goodbye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel.